Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry module. This is video number seven and we're going to be looking at a mole of a compound and uh, how we do some calculations uh, based around that. So in the last video we were looking at how we can uh, use a, a unit that makes it sensible to be measuring quantities in the laboratory. And now we want to see if we can apply that unit of molar mass to compounds. So when we're doing calculations around molar mass of a compound, what we want to do is we want to add together all the atomic masses of the component elements in a compound. Now, of course, we need to do that in their correct ratios. And we'll have a look at exactly why that's important as we go along. The first thing you need to do is to find the atomic masses of individual elements in the periodic table. Remember, we're going to provide you with a periodic table, so you don't have to memorize these. You just need to know how to use this tool effectively. Then we count how many atoms there are for each of the individual elements in the compound, and then just multiply those where necessary and add each of the component atomic masses together to find the molar mass. This is a fairly um, simple sequence, um, but it, it may not uh, appear that way to you in your head. So let's look at an example to see if, if this makes sense. So the first compound that we have here is uh, water. So water is a compound made from hydrogen and oxygen, and the ratio is 2 to 1. Now we could also look at a compound such as hydrogen peroxide. This has the formula H2O2. So obviously there would be a difference in the calculation here, and that's why the formula is very, very important when we're looking at working out molar mass. So what we do is we go to the periodic table, we find the mass of each of these elements, so 1.008 for hydrogen and 16.00 for oxygen. So they're the individual elements. Then we look at how many we have of each, and in this formula of H2O we have two lots of the hydrogens but only one lot of the oxygen so we're going to then add these together two lots of um, 1.008 will be 2.016 we add that to 16 and we get our answer of 18.016 grams per mole so this is another example of our quantity quantity ratio and that's really important because it means that we can start to get a sense of how we can convert masses into moles a little bit later on. So this is the R part, this is the ratio, grams per mole. The uh, second compound that I've listed there is sodium chloride, but you can see that the difference, if I had calculated the molar mass of hydrogen peroxide, it would have been multiplying this second value here. Uh, let me just change the color, so if I say this is green here, I'd have to multiply this by two. And that would significantly change. In fact, now we have 32 and 234.016 grams per mole. And that's a very important um, reason why the formula is so critically important in chemistry to make sure we get the formula for our compounds correct and that we then work out the molar mass of each of these compounds. In the second example, we'll go back to the blue, and sodium chloride. This is a nice easy one because we only have one sodium and one chlorine so we look each of these up from the periodic table and we notice that in this case we're only multiplying each of these by one so we just add them together and we get our molar mass of 58.44 grams per mole now one of the little questions that the original booklets have for you that we've uh, made some modifications to um, is sometimes we get a formula for example that may be written in this form And we need to start looking at calculating molar masses. Now, one of the most important things for you to remember is that if you have a formula like this, when you are calculating the molar mass, you are calculating it on the basis of that formula. In fact, we don't even particularly when we're doing these calculations care about the state that it's in. What we care about is the actual formula. So each of these individuals is what we focus in on. 
Once we've got our values, then we may um, take into account the coefficients that are in the front of these equations. But when we're calculating molar mass of compounds, we're specifically looking at the compound itself and its components, which we can then uh, break down, look up the values from the periodic table and make the calculations. This requires some practice and hopefully you'll get plenty of opportunities to practice in class. Thanks for watching.